This video will cover using the 3D Analyst Toolbar in ArcMap with LiDAR datasets, as is covered in Chapter 9 of the book, Introduction to LiDAR Using ArcGIS Desktop, which is available as an ebook on Amazon. We'll start in ArcMap with a blank map document and begin by turning on the 3D Analyst Toolbar and then docking it. Next, we'll check to make sure the 3D Analyst extension is on by clicking on Customize, Extensions, and being sure that there's a checkbox next to 3D Analyst. We'll close that. Then we're going to go ahead and add some data. And we're going to be opening the Hopkinsville, Kentucky LAA data set that we created in Chapter 8. So we'll double check and make sure we have our return set to all before we begin making a tin. We're now ready to process this LAS data set. We're going to go to Arc Toolbox, 3D Analyst Tools, Conversion, from LAS data set, and then LAS data set to TIN. And be sure when you're in here to click on the Show Help button for more info on the tool settings. Here I'm going to change my settings to match those in the book exactly. If this tool doesn't run the first time, don't worry, just check your error message that ArcMap gives you, and typically it has to do with the thinning settings, so just play around with the thinning type and the settings there, and um, you should be able to get it to run. So I'm just setting my numbers here to match the book, I click OK, and then I sped up the process here for you, and you may notice on my output that my tin name is actually different, it's tin1, I actually did have to run the tool twice. So I'm going to go to my 3D Analyst toolbar and select TIN1 and we're going to be exploring these tools which are now enabled after selecting the TIN. First let's take a peek at the options for the 3D Analyst toolbar. The interpolation tab allows you to change methods of interpolation used to determine the values that are showing within the TIN. The graph data is an important tab. If you create graphs with any of these tools this allows you to set a template for the graph and also determine where they're stored. So under the tools, the first button is Create Contour. When you select it, you can see your cursor changes, and you just click on any area on the map, and it creates a contour for that elevation for the point where you clicked. And you can continue to add contours to the map just by making single clicks at any point on the map. These contours that we're creating are not actually data sets. They are just map elements. So if we want to delete, or alter or even look at the properties of these contours, we need to come up to the Select Elements tool and then we can click on it and when you see a sort of cyan box around it, then you can either hit the Delete key to get rid of it or you can also, using that Select Elements tool, you can double click and you'll bring up the properties for that element. Um, first we're going to look at the Length tab, then the Size and Position tab, and both of these tabs give you information about the contour line itself. You can also change the properties under the, the first tab there, the Symbology tab. Let's move on to our next tool on the toolbar, Create Downhill Path. After selecting the tool, you just click on the map anywhere with a single click and it will create a path from that point going downhill. You can't control the line length with this tool. Again, to find out more about it, use your Select Elements tool, double click for Properties, and under length, you can actually see the length of the downhill path. In this case, it's in meters. And if you look back at our toolbar, you can see now that the profile graph button is enabled. So let's close this dialog box, and then we're going to go back in and click on the profile graph tool. This is creating a graph of that steepest path line. We can right click on the graph to open a dialog box. And there are all kinds of options here. One is a print preview dialog, so let's take a look at that one. And you can go in here and alter the, the print properties. Um, another option is you can add this graph to a layout, a map layout. Um, we're going to go into advanced properties. And in here you can actually edit the title as well as some other things. And think back to, to those 3D analyst options that we looked at before we even started, you could bring in a graph template and that's where this, this might be really useful. So I'm just going to change my title here and then click close. Um, we can also go into just the simple properties, not the advanced properties option. 
and you can change things around in there as well. So just some options for uh, playing around with your graphs, making them look the way that you want them to look for different line paths. Now we're going to go to the Create Line of Sight tool. When you select this tool, you can see this new dialog box opens up for setting some different options. For using the tool, you just click once to start it, and then you're drawing a line, and then you're double-clicking to stop the line. So when we're looking at this line we created, black is the starting point, and anything in green means it's visible, and anything in red means it would be not visible within that line of sight that you've created. You can also view the properties for these lines, the same way that we viewed the other properties here, it's an element, and you can create profile graphs just like we did with the last tool using the same button on the 3D Analyst toolbar. So we're going to close out of that, and next we're going to look at the Interpolate Point button. So for this, you're just going to select the tool and then click anywhere on the tin and it's going to create a point with a highlighted box. You can see the point elevation down in the lower left corner of ArcMap. And this is also an element, so again, you can use the Select Elements tool to take a look at its properties. Next, let's use the Interpolate Line tool. Here you're going to click once to start, and then double click to stop the line. And you can view these properties in the same way that we viewed the other elements, we won't go over that. And this one you can also create a profile graph with. And lastly, let's go to Interpolate Polygon, and this one we're going to click to start, uh, single click to start, and single click to create a vertex, and then double click to close the polygon. You can create any shape polygon here that you would like. And if we go to the properties of this element, we can actually find the area right here in the properties dialog, which would be a pretty useful measurement to have. And there is no profile graph option here for a polygon that only works for lines in this 3D Analyst toolbar. And just to cover our last couple buttons, under the profile graph there are options for point and terrain point profiles. If you had those types of data sets added to your map document, then those buttons would become available to you. Um, and then we also have one button to launch Arc Scene and another one to launch Arc Globe. Those are the last two buttons on the toolbar. And that's it for Chapter 9. This video was produced by Virginia View, a consortium dedicated to promoting remote sensing, outreach, education, and research, with funding from the America View Consortium, in partnership with Virginia Geospatial Extension and GeoTED.